Welcome to Sip and Strip, the podcast where we explore the nuances of desire and unravel the intricacies of pleasure, all while enjoying a glass of your favorite wine. Join us on a journey where we dive into the world of sexual exploration and embrace the beauty of conscious intimacy. And here are your hosts, wine communicator Natalia Suta and sex and intimacy coach Melanie Knight. Very often women, as women, we're having sex too quickly. What do you mean by too quickly? So, do you know that a woman should be having her vagina or her clitoris stimulated for at least 40 minutes? 40? Four, or four, zero? zero. Okay, before <laughs> having sex, before having intercourse. Men can, can can feel quite bad when they're not performing. But also women, I think we do have a responsibility to know our own bodies and know what we like and then ask for it. Ends. But what Tantra says is slowing everything down, enjoying the pleasure along the way. And 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 because you're relaxing into it and enjoying it, you're more likely to actually have a more incredible orgasm, but you're not chasing the orgasm. There are more than just one type of orgasm. So they are officially, I think, about seven or eight. Right, so this is our first episode and I'm really, really excited about this because we will be talking about the topic of orgasm, which I think will be a really great base and foundation for all the future episodes to come. And I want to kind of dive right into the topic of, of orgasm. We will be talking about women orgasm specifically. Orgasm can be such a big elephant in the room it's difficult to talk about it and i appreciate that you may not want to talk about it with everyone maybe not your best friends but i feel like it's also quite difficult to talk about orgasm with your own partner or partner so if you're talking about polyamory relationships do you see that a lot with your clients with women that you work with that they don't know how to talk about it either with you or their partners is that is that a big mm. issue yeah, I think there can be two issues around that. One is that if they're not having orgasms, I think it can be very difficult to talk to a partner because um, it may be seen as criticising their partner for not performing in some way. Yeah, so it can be a whole range of you know issues where you don't want to talk about stuff like that. Or it might be that you're... You're getting close and you, they're not quite satisfying. You're not quite doing what you want them to do. But you don't, again, you don't want to criticise them. So there can be lots of issues about talking about. I think the, the feedback is the, the, the hardest bit, as you say, because when it, when, obviously when you orgasm and your climax and everything is going fine, I suppose it's easy to talk about it. But the, the moment when you can't, it's like hurting your partner's ego in a way, right? So mm -hmm. it's difficult to give the feedback, but also to receive the, the negative feedback, especially because, as you say, it's taken personally, whereas actually it's just maybe not so much criticising the, the, the partner, but trying to work things together as, mm -hmm. a, as a match because you've got to work. It takes two to tango, right? It do does. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things that I'm very much an advocate for is knowing your own body and knowing um, knowing where you like to have pleasure. It's interesting because very often we can let, we can want a partner to make us orgasm, but actually we don't know how to do it ourselves. And put that responsibility on him, right? You, right. Make, you have to make me orgasm, you have to make me happy, right? So And then... There's a feeling of failure or criticism, so it's not 
you know, I think there's you talk about the ego, which is which is true. There's that you know, men can 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 feel quite bad when they're not performing, but also women. I think we do have a responsibility to know our own bodies and know what we like and then ask for it. Do a lot of women that you work with come to you and sort of blame the partner, but it actually turns out that they don't know their own body and they don't know how to ask for what mm. they need? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I would say not not every woman blames a partner, but yes, that, that is quite common. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to... Um, in society, we're not taught this stuff. We're not taught in schools, you know, and um, <laughs> how to to know about our bodies and, and our own pleasure. And men, in some respects, are sort of taught that they should be able to please a woman. So you know, it, there's no fault on either side, and yet neither side really knows what they're doing. Yeah, that's true. And as you say, we're not taught at school, obviously. And as we will touch upon. Later on, there are so many different types of orgasm. What an average woman knows, including myself, is just the tip of the iceberg, really. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know how to ask for, for things because we're just focusing on the time and a bit of what we think gives us pleasure and completely ignoring all the other bits that we don't know about that we will learn mm-hmm. about. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, so... Um, if, if that's okay with you, I'd like to introduce the wine before we move on to the next question. Mm-hmm. So what, we, what we've what we got in front of us is Catena 2021 Malbec. And the reason I chose to pair the topic of orgasm with this one, with Malbec, is uh, twofold. Malbec is one of, especially Argentinian Malbec, which, which is this one, oftentimes it's very intense and very complex with long finish which kind of makes me think of makes me think of orgasm mm. a, a good orgasm could be I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it could be intense <laughs> and complex so that's one reason and the other reason is that malbec is typically a crowd pleaser i don't think i know a single person that enjoys wine that would say no to an argentinian malbec correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think there was a person that would say no to an orgasm. <laughs> well, actually, I know a few. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> but the first, the first reason you would agree with intense, complex, long Definitely. finish, love deeply it. satisfying, <laughs> and I love your analogy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so so I just say a few words about about this wine. So Malbec is um, French grape which is just a lot more popular in Argentina. It was brought there from Bordeaux in mid-19th century, and it just became a rock star. In France, it plays a minor role in some blends. In Argentina, it's a flagship grape, where they produce typically single varietal wines, so just focus on just that one grape, so you will see it on the label. And that's down to the climate and the altitudes, it's a lot warmer and the, the grapes are typically planted at high altitudes. So that combination really makes the grape thrive in those conditions. So the grapes ripen very slowly, so the tannins are smoother, the acidity is lower, and it's just a lot more juicy, ripe than, than the wine, than the wine from, from France. And, the winery Catena came to fame under Nicolas Catena, who pioneered the use of European winemaking and also planting grapes at high altitude in the Andes. And he's the first South American winemaker that was named the Cantus Men of the Year, which is a massive title. And currently uh, the winery is, is led by his daughter, Dr. Laura Catena. So we've got the expertise, the passion, the innovation, perfect soils, perfect climate. This is just a perfect combination for the grape. It's sourced from various locations or at all locations at high altitudes, which is exactly what you need when you're drinking, when you're looking for a good wine from Argentina. You look at really, really high altitudes, 2,000, 3,000 meters is not mm-hmm. uncommon. So, we don't know that. <laughs> uh, let's try the wine. I'd like mm-hmm. to hear your thoughts, Melanie. <laughs> this smells lovely, actually. Really mm-hmm. juicy, mm-hmm. right? Dark fruits. Very pronounced, intense. Stays after you 
swallow it. It does. It's a really um, deep taste. Like yeah. deep. Yes, it's really, really deep. I kind of want to say what I what I would say when I climb up, which is <laughs> fun for me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so yeah, so kind of yeah, perfect wine, perfect wine for the topic of August in. And what I love about this wine, you can get it at, at White Rose, Majestic or Cado. So it's a high quality wine from amazing winery, amazing spot in Argentina, and you've got it at your fingertips in many supermarkets. I'm going to leave links in the in the show notes. Okay, so we're going to continue sipping on, on the wine and then uh, go back to talk talking about sex. Sex doesn't have to end in orgasm, which I'm going to be honest with you, it's a it's a massive relief for me because I'm one of those women that don't really climax every time they have sex. It's not with frequency. It's very difficult to to get there sometimes. So knowing that it's not the end goal of every time I've got sexual intercourse, it's a relief mm-hmm. because um there's there's less pressure on me um so so from this i've got two questions really one is what is stopping us or many maybe just a few things that are stopping us from from having the orgasm and then if orgasm is not the end goal of, of the sex then what's the point of the sex should we redefine how we look at sex be a woman so that we don't obsess about oh my god i'm i'm having sex and i have to come yeah oh, no. <laughs> There's lots of elements to what you talked about there. So let me see if I can break it down a little bit. Yeah, I don't have the exact stats in front of me, but um, but very often women do come to me saying they don't have orgasm from penetrative sex. You see, when where women normally sort of mostly um, orgasm from is from the clitoris. And so when, when, a, when a man is in, inside of you, he's in his penis, he's not stimulating the mm-hmm. clitoris. Yeah. So that's why a lot of women don't feel pleasure or don't have an orgasm while having penetration. Now, there's lots of things to say about this. One is that very often women, as women, we're having sex too quickly. What do you mean by too quickly? So do you know that a woman should be having her vagina or her clitoris stimulated for at least 40 minutes? 40. Four, or four zero, zero okay, before <laughs> having sex, before having intercourse. Right, okay. But oftentimes the intercourse ends well before me mm. or that. So like a woman, she doesn't even start feeling that pleasure and the man is already done. You might call that foreplay, although I don't like the way for uh, the word foreplay because I think it sort of indicates that it's before sex, which it, it is actually for me part of having sex. sex. Mm-hmm. Um, but women, there is a whole biology, which we might talk more about in our the next, next episode, episode yeah. when we're talking about uh, vulvas. But there's a whole biology that our vaginas, our vulvas, actually um, expand and engorge over a period of time with stimulation. <laughs> okay. Um, and that takes about 40 minutes for a woman to oh be gosh. completely aroused. So for, for a lot of us, especially in the West, we're having what you might call quite dry sex because... Mm-hmm. Women are not properly lubricated before a man is penetrating. Right. So, so what I wanted to say is that, and I don't know if this is a good advice or advice that we should be giving, is for women to first masturbate before she approached the partner. Like you can, you can do that. That's certainly one option. And the other option might be to encourage your partner to to stimulate uh, you with each other. That's what we would traditionally have called foreplay and that might not be direct stimulation on the clitoris or the vagina it might be that you're having i don't know a bit of kissing and cuddling oh right oh okay so it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be but it's it's sexual stimulation so that woman gets turned turned on on. and and you will know that because you'll be getting wet right okay is there such a thing as women that just become instantly wet or, or quicker, they don't need 40 minutes. I do, yeah, I think, 
I think definitely if there is, that is just an average. 40 minutes is, mm-hmm. is just an average right. that has been put out there by you know, doctors and scientists and stuff. I think, yes, it can be quicker, but I would suspect that most most women are not having enough time of big play before having sex. Yes, yeah. no, right. So this is one of the reasons why it's so hard for us to orgasm, which makes sense because the partner has finished already and we, we're we not even properly stimulated, so it's just impossible, physically impossible. Mm. The maths is just... Just know, doesn't add up. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? <laughs> right, okay. So then one way would really be extending that, what you say, foreplay in inverted mm. commas. Any other quick and dirty tips for both women and men to get there or to get up to orgasm or to improve it to enhance it? So, I mean, you can use, you can obviously use different techniques. As I said, kissing, cuddling, is, you know, it's, it's that passionate kind. I would say also fantasies are a really oh, good way. Kind of talking about them before you could have been. Yes. Um, maybe flirting with each other, you know, by text or in person oh, beforehand, bringing that anticipation and that's, you know, you're feeling sexy, maybe dressing up nice and sexy. Okay. So there's lots of things you can do, but what I would say is there's no real shortcut mm-hmm. into to right. being properly turned on because, as I said, it's a, it's a biological thing. Right, okay. What about the the other question that I had that sex doesn't need to end in orgasm? Is that actually, is that a thing or is is it a thing? Maybe, did I make it up? (laughs) No, it is is a thing, but not many people will know about this. But um, I teach um, what you might call uh, conscious sexuality Mm -hmm. or the other word for it is tantra. Right, so what is that um, about? So Tantra, I mean, I could talk probably for a whole half an hour, if not more, about just, just Tantra. But Tantra, just quickly, is is a... In its origins, two, you know, thousands of years ago, actually came from India. Mm-hmm. It was a, It's a spiritual practice, but it's a spiritual practice that brings in sexuality, whereas a lot of other religious and spiritual practices... Um, basically ignore either ignore sex or make it wrong, right? Yes, correct. Um, um, but Tantra says that you can have some really beautiful spiritual experiences by having the orgasm. Right. The problem with most of us, and it relates to what we were saying earlier, the problem with most of us is we are wanting to chase the orgasm Mm -hmm. as quickly as possible to have it over because what we want is that feeling of like that, wow, I've had an orgasm, oh my God. But what Tantra says is slowing everything down, enjoying the pleasure along the way. And, and... Because you're relaxing into it and enjoying it, you're more likely to actually have a more incredible orgasm, but you're not chasing the orgasm. Because ch- it's like chasing the orgasm that is that keeps escaping you because you're so obsessed with it that you yeah. just can't get there, whereas doing it the opposite way, enjoying the moment, being present, not having the pressure, I have to come, there is a time limit of one hour, one hour, mm-hmm. thirty, whatever. It's actually paradoxical in that, Taking the pressure away helps us to get yeah, back. That, yeah, and it can believe me. The other thing I'd say about it is, yeah, um, it takes the pressure away, but also the other thing that pe- a lot of what I'm finding is quite common is people are having orgasms really, really quickly, like, oh, I'm going to bed, but I don't feel tired, so let me have a quick orgasm. Oh, wow. So I feel tired, and they get that release, but it sort of feels a bit, flat and mm-hmm. you know not satisfying in some way and that's because we haven't re- we've got just gone for the orgasm the goal and we're not really enjoying the process does this make us less sensitive to actually 
enjoying what's happening to our body and yeah. less sensitive to our bodies and how it responds to the touch and, and just you, you just lose contact with your mm. body, essentially. I love what you just said there because it's completely true. Many others are disconnected with our bodies, right, like yes. our feelings and sensations. We're just going for the goal, which feels great, but we're not actually really feeling it. Right. And and the fact that we disconnected from our bodies, that does this also stand in the way of actually climaxing? It can for some people. I think it can go one of two ways. I think we can get sort of a, addicted to the orgasm because it's <laughs> like, right, I can't feel anything, but I know I feel good after I've after had an orgasm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you go the other way, which is, I somehow can't orgasm because I'm trying and trying and trying, like you said a few minutes ago, but somehow because you're chasing it, you can't yeah. orgasm. Right. Right, yes, exactly. So actually, you chase the orgasm, you can't get there, and there is this other element, you don't want to disappoint your partner or partners, and then you fake orgasm, mm. which I would be assuming makes it even harder to get it and just essentially, you, is you like this vicious circle that you start fake orgasm so you disconnect from your partner from yourself and it just puts you in this rabbit hole that you can't get them anymore i don't know if that's a yeah i think this is there. um yeah i think this is a really tough conversation i think as women that we are um and men you know we're stuck in a situation where very often it's difficult to talk to our partners about this stuff and like you say so you know very often if we're not, if we're disconnected from our bodies and not able to orgasm, we don't want to upset our partner. Mm -hmm. So yes, we might fake an orgasm. That's one way to do it. So we do. So we're pretending to our partner we're enjoying it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not just the the lying piece. It's the piece of then your partner thinks he's pleasing you. And he keeps doing what he keeps he doing the same thing working, over and over like, again. <laughs> and it's such a shame because in some respects, but neither partners actually get what they want. Right. Because in some level, he will sense that she's not happy, mm -hmm. but she seems to be happy because she's making oh, all the right noise. It can, and so the poor partner is like, oh, my God, she, and you know, she's, she, I'll do this again and again and again. But he doesn't understand that he's not doing it and she can't tell him because she's worried that he'll get upset yeah. by it. Yeah. So we get in this cycle of neither one of us really happy or satisfied. Essentially doing the service to ourselves. I mean, us women fighting because mm. obviously it leads us down that path where, yes, the part of things he's pleasuring us, whether he's not, and then you're scared to tell him and um, but it's got such a history to this as well because, you know, um, women, as women, we're very often brought up and, you know, I know you're younger than me, but as women, we're very often brought up not to be able to voice what we yes, don't want. Yes, yes. And, and I think we've got a session <laughs> on consent and boundaries because, again, we're not, you know, neither sexes actually are taught on how to really ask for what we want. Yes. Mm -hmm. And consent and boundaries is so important in a relationship to be able to give each person freedom to be able to ask and voice what they want, what they need, and that give and take, which is yes. so important. And without taking it personally, I am, mean, because yeah. there's a bit element about when you ask for something, yeah, it, it could be taken personally the wrong way, like you order it, giving orders, or yeah, I see how that works. So we've been talking about. Not so much negative aspect of the orgasm, you know, how we can't get there and, and it's not long enough and all, and all those things. Let's switch to the, the pos well, positive mm. <laughs> element of it because there are more than just one type of orgasm. Imelan, you mentioned the, the orgasm that we get from stimulating clitoris. I personally know about one more, which is G-spot, I yeah. think. That's yeah. all I know, and I'm here. To, I'm happy for you to kind of <laughs> blow me away. With so they are officially, I think, about seven or eight, and we'll just go through them quite quickly. Sure. But yes, we've got the G-spot. The G-spot is often um, very famous or infamous because of squirting. 
Oh, um, yeah, okay, yes. So very often when a G-spot is stimulated, um, and I know we're only on audio here, so people can't see what I'm talking about, but this is when you're, you can do it yourself or you can get your partner to do it. It's mm-hmm. when your finger is in and it curls up mm-hmm. and you'll feel a spongy area. It's actually misnamed. It's not really a spot. It's a spongy area. Spongy area. Spongy okay, I'll be, look- I'll be looking here. for that later on. <laughs> yeah, breeze <do. laughs> um, I've also got a great sex toy. <laughs> Um, that stimulates that area as well. Um, Now, the G-spot, I think, is really, really important one. It's a, um, it's one that can get, can have this very deep orgasms, deep internal orgasms. Deeper than the one from the clitoris. Yes. Oh, wow, okay. Um, And it's deeper, and it's also quite known for being quite an emotional area. It's where we store our, our emotions. So a lot of women who start to try and um, stimulate the G-spot can actually often want to pull away because it feels quite sensitive. And, and oh, wow. so, But it's really beautiful if you stick with it. And I've learned, I've taught myself over, not over the last sort of year, and taught myself how to stimulate the G-spot. The other thing about the G-spot is you have to really relax to get that squirting to happen. It's all about relaxing and allowing. And again, we don't relax because we don't want emotions, so we tense up. And again, any orgasm, any of these orgasms we're going to talk about, actually need us to relax into it. You can't rush a G-spot orgasm. Right, so again, no chasing, being present, connecting to your body, feeling what you feel. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Right, okay. And then every woman can get this orgasm for me. yeah right but there is it, it, you do need to well, i'd say learn I, I wouldn't say necessarily learn some some women i know naturally squirt and it's it's something that is more natural for some but i would say for most of us it's it's a it's something that you have to learn to relax into right to learn to orgasm from that stimulation or learn how to squirt one you close for both Okay. Both, because you don't necessarily always squirt from that area. You can have an orgasm without squirting. Squirting is, and the other thing to say about squirting is it's not, a lot of people think it's urine that comes out. It <laughs> comes out with so much force, but it's not. It's a, They don't even know quite exactly what it is, but it's a mix of bodily fluids. Right, okay. And it's got a different consistency to urine, so it's not urine. The other reason people don't relax is it can feel like you want to go to the toilet. So, of course, what happens oh, is see. you it's clench it. Yeah, it can be a little bit. And so you need to relax, but often when we feel like we want to go to the toilet, we clench up. Right. Because we don't want to wet ourselves, and we've been taught to hold it all in so we don't wet ourselves. So I, f- I feel like saying learn is actually quite adequate in the sense that you're just learning the process. So you know, okay, this is not me wanting to have a wee. It's me actually getting mm. closer and, and just... You know, giving in in a way. Yeah. Into the I love the word of surrender. Surrender. Oh yes, that's a good word. Because it's it is a la- about allowing. It comes back to pleasure, allowing pleasure, and allowing myself to relax into it. One thing I realised when I started doing this work was actually how much of an orgasm it was about getting it over, getting it over. Right. And because we're not good at being with pleasure. Yeah. Oh, well. Like they're like the orgasm, we think, oh, my God, I want the orgasm because that's pleasure. But actually, it's getting it over with. That is the pleasure and the fact that you got there. Now, if we've chased it and we've like, oh, okay, I'm going for the orgasm, right, it's over. Like, you've had it peak and it's over, mm-hmm. right? What I'm talking about is pleasure over maybe uh, minutes hours right which we're not good at holding that level of intensity yeah. so that's why we want the orgasm because it's getting the pleasure over with oh no yeah i get that now it feels to me like we're not yes we're not good at being with the pleasure because we're not good at 
spending so much time on on one activity that there was this constant instant gratification doing things hundred things at the same time so staying with pleasure let's say for two three four hours is like oh my god i don't you know i've got things to do so there's that <laughs> yeah i i do that i had i have afternoons with my partner like you we meet on a friday afternoon and we we are we're Having pleasure oh. into Friday evening until like 11, 12 o'clock at night. Oh my gosh, wow. Okay, is that inappropriate to say that it's actually getting me a bit... Like when I imagine <laughs> doing that with my partner, it's actually getting me a bit wet. Yeah, there's no problem with that in my eyes. <laughs> oh wow, okay. Is that part of the tantric sex a little bit, what you've just described or just... Um, no, not really. I mean... Um, I, any sex therapist or, you know, would talk, probably talk about the, the G-spot orgasm and um, and how to relax into it. But Tantra is very much about actually enjoying the journey, slowing mm-hmm. down, right. being mindful. So the sort of two fit together, but not everyone knows who, who does um, sex and intimacy coaching necessarily does know a lot about Tantra. Right, Okay. Okay, so we've got the stimulation, is it clitoral? So we've got clitoral stimulation, we've got a G spot, there's also another spot called the A spot, um, which is nearby. I'm probably not going to talk a lot about that. It's a similar no. spot internally, which again you can relax into. Right. But there are some really interesting ones. So you can have a vaginal one as well, a whole inside um vagina that's another one that's, that's a different one. type okay. now the other ones that you may not know about you can, I don't have know a, these ones. <laughs> you can have a breast orgasm <laughs> theoretically can every woman get breast orgasm theoretically yes i mean i would say obviously if you've had um surgery on your breasts or anything like that you may have scarring and not right okay no damage and stuff like that but um but if you've got two healthy breasts then there's no reason why you couldn't have a breast orgasm is it very different to the let's say to the clitoral one or just i assume it is yeah because it's actually the pleasure is centered here so how you would have a ple- breast orgasm is is you would um you would massage or your partner would right. massage your breast potentially again for hours okay um, right. and it would become so sensitive and alive that your whole body would start to shake and vibrate and how wow. you would have in orgasm feelings just like you. Similar, wow. they're quite a little bit different to what a clitoral orgasm would be. Okay. Oh, my gosh. No, I definitely did not know about this and, well, let alone experience. <laughs> <laughs> there will be an episode about breasts. No, there so we will we'll talk a bit more yes. about that. And there's something called also related to that is a, is a whole body orgasm. Wow. So we're one of the... Um, I heard a, a, well, I don't know whether you call it a stat, but there's only one other mammal that has sex for pleasure, not just for procreation. Wow. So the other one, the only other animal is dolphins, apparently. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So oh, we have sex dolphins. for pleasure. We, do, we don't have, we, I mean, we do obviously have sex yes. for making babies and we wouldn't be a human race if we didn't. But we have sex for pleasure as well, and our whole bodies can be stimulated over a long period of time, and that means energy can move within and vibrations would move within your whole body. Right. And that can be achieved, and again, we'll talk more about Tantra at some point, but um, a classic way of doing that is having something called a Tantric massage. Oh, right. And a tantric massage lasts between three and four hours and it st- slowly stimulates your body um, and arousal. So just having very light, gentle strokes all over your body that slowly arouses your whole body mm-hmm. over a period of like three, four hours and you can have your whole, whole body. body orgasm. Okay, so you're like a machine that's ready to take pleasure. We just need to learn how to, how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> And there are the other other kinds of orgasms as well. I think that they're, they're in the you know when you if you look online, there's ones that are related to sleep. So you know, like men, we can have 
I, what what yeah. is laughingly jokingly called wet dreams, but yes. but women can have them as well. So yeah. we fantasize and we dream in our sleep, and we can have orgasms. Yes, I do get that every now um, and then. Um, um, and is it connected to what are you dreaming about? I don't know whether they've ever done any studies about oh, that, okay. but I would I would think it's probably related to fantasies and um, well, dreaming about fantasies. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, that rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the, the, the main ones, uh, clitoral, G-spot, A-spot, vaginal, breast, whole body and sleep orgasm. Mm. Okay, good. a lot to explore. There is. <laughs> <laughs> there is one other that some, I don't think I saw it in one of the, the, the links I sent you, but there was, I think there's one around laughing as well. I think you can have a laugh orgasm. Oh, wow. Have you ever laughed so much that, like, you peed yourself or something? Like, there's that, like, uncontrollable... Not that I want to admit here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not, not on the microphone. <laughs> I'm very, well, mainly encouraged, relieved, mm. you know, that the sex is not all about orgasm, that we can get there. It's just relaxing into our bodies, which is a challenge in itself, but it's possible for, 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 for every woman, which, as I say, it's, it's, it's a relief for me because I suppose for a long time I thought that I'm one of those women that just can't ever get there, which mm. then, again, sends you to that vicious circle that yes. does. you can, but you tell yourself you can't. So big relief, a lot to look forward to. So thank you so much for taking me on this orgasmic journey <laughs> <laughs> today you're welcome <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who's listening we will leave some links in the show notes and we will see you here in a couple of weeks bye bye, bye.